Hey everyone, uh, good morning. This is Pastor Britt Strohecker and welcome to Closer to God episode 175. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we continue to study your word, to get closer to you, to get to know you, and to also learn the things that we need to know for the road of life that is before us. Please set the path for us today and help us to follow and lead us and guide us to a better destination. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're continuing our study of the book of Romans, and we're starting chapter 5 today. And this section is entitled, Faith Brings Joy. Faith Brings Joy. And starting at verse 1 of chapter 5 of Romans, I'm using the New Living Translation. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith... Christ has brought us into this place of highest privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. So, uh, as we talked about in the chapter 4, where we're talking about the faith of Abraham, if we have the same faith, like we said in that chapter, then we are set free from our sins because of what Jesus Christ has done with us, for us, okay? And we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. So that should give us a sense of confidence, and that should give us a sense of uh, peace because our sin, even though we need to repent of it and turn away from it, uh, we know that we do have forgiveness by the grace of God, which is freely given to us so that we can live a life that is pleasing to God if we live it according to our faith. At verse 3, it says, we can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. Wow, some of you may say, rejoice when we run into problems and trials? Well, wait, listen, what he has to say here. For we know that they are good for us. Wait, our problems and our trials are good for us? Hold on, hold on. Don't jump to any conclusions yet. They help us learn to endure. And that's the thing. Life is an endurance test. All right, we have to endure many things. We have many challenges in our careers. We have many challenges in our families. We have many challenges in our communities. And to face these challenges, we need endurance. And the best source and the best conditioner spiritually for us for endurance is our faith in God. That's what Paul's saying here. And endurance develops strength of character in us. Yes, our experiences bring about our character. And if we're able to have strong, faithful endurance through our experiences, it strengthens our character. It gives us strength so that if we can overcome one thing, we have confidence that we can overcome the next thing that comes along. And with that strength, we can face the rigors of this life. That's what Paul's trying to tell us here, okay? And character strengthens our confident expectation of salvation. So as we draw closer to God, and as we develop our character through our faith in him and our endurance through the rigors of life, then we have that expectation of salvation where we're assured that Christ died for our sins, and we're assured that God will forgive and forget our sins, and we're assured that there is an, a heavenly inheritance that awaits us, okay? So, and this expectation will not disappoint us. Let me read that again for you. And this expectation will not, not, N-O-T, not disappoint us. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. And that's what the whole, that's another thing that the Holy Spirit does for us. Not only does the Holy Spirit convict us of our sin, not only does the Holy Spirit draw us to Jesus Christ, not only does the Holy Spirit give us a sense of guidance and direction, and not only does the Holy Spirit lead us in God's teaching through his holy word, it fills us 
with God's love when he takes up residence within our hearts. That's our direct connection to God. That is us being a child of God. That is us being a member of God's family. That is us being a part of the body of Christ because we have a part of him firmly within us, in our hearts, and that fills us with the love of God through Jesus Christ our Lord, okay? So that's very, very important. So let me read that portion again. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. And you know what? Sin does make us helpless because sometimes when we struggle with sin we are not strong enough we are not wise enough we do not have the willpower or, or the things that we need to overcome sin that's why we turn to the person who has overcome all sin for all time and that is Jesus Christ our Lord so we need him to help us and when you know we were still sinners God sent Jesus just at the right time to die for us on the cross. So when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, no one is likely to die for a good person, though someone might be willing to die for a person who is especially good. Now he's talking to our human side. You know, to give up your life for somebody else is a very bold and honorable and, and selfless sacrifice that you can make for your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And, you know, a, a lot of soldiers that have served in our military and have served our country were willing to make that sacrifice. But not everyone is willing to make that sacrifice, you know. So sometimes if they see that there is an especially good person out there, they might even consider giving up their life. And that's a huge decision. Think about it. You're giving up your life based upon faith in God that there's going to be uh, you know, more after this, okay? But it's it's very bold and it's very honorable and, it, and it's a huge decision to give up your life for someone else. That's why we're fortunate to have the volunteers that we do in the in the military. That's why we're fortunate to have the volunteers that we do in our first responders all across the country because they put their lives on the line for us all the time, all those groups. So, uh, so now no one is likely to die for a good person, though someone might be willing to die for a person who is especially good. So Paul's speaking to our human nature here. But, but understand this, God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. At our worst, God found us. God sent his son. His son was willing to leave his throne in heaven and come down here and walk amongst us and even go to the cross for us, okay? But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. It's huge. That's probably one of the most important verses that you'll read in all the Bible. God showed his great love for us. God loves us unconditionally, and if this doesn't show us how much he loves us, I don't know what will. Okay, so he sent, he sent Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by what? The blood of Christ. Did you hear that? We've been made right in God's sight by Jesus' blood. That's what cleanses us and makes atonement for our sin. That was the sacrifice. That is the sin debt that we owed. That is the punishment that Jesus took on in our place. He took our punishment and endured it on the cross and shed his blood for us, okay? So we were made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ. He will certainly save us from God's judgment. So if we claim this, and we give our sin and, and crucify it there and nail it to the cross there and follow Jesus and repent whenever we make mistakes and try to draw closer to him and live more like him each and every day, then we will certainly be saved 
from God's judgment. For since we were restored to friendship with God by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be delivered from eternal punishment by his life. So his death delivered us when we were enemies of God in our sin, but we're going to be delivered from eternal punishment, that second death, that eternal lake of fire that awaits those who reject God and who uh, embrace their sin rather than embracing Jesus Christ. You know, that's the second death. That's the eternal lake from, of fire from which there is no escape. So, you know, we are delivered from eternal punishment because Jesus was raised to life, showing us that God is willing to give us another chance to live a faithful life, a righteous life, a life filled with Christ, a life filled with his love, a life where we can endure all things through the peace that he provides us and the strength that he provides us, the courage that he provides us, and the love that he continues to show for us, okay? So, now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us in making us friends of God. Huge stuff here. So that's all we have for today. We'll pick up in chapter 5 in the next episode. Until then, remember, nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ. I'll talk to you soon.